Hello everyone, my name is Paul Ledger and welcome to an instructional video on how to implement Game Jolt's API into a Unity game. So, I already have a basic game. The point of the game is called the button. You can click the button, you can click the trophy thing, it gives you your score, and the game can, and the game closes. But now, we're going to implement Game Jolt's API into this game. So first thing you want to do, create a Game Jolt account. Once you've created a Game Jolt account, you'll have this option to add a game. Once you click that link, you'll get this pop-up and you'll want to accept the rules. But we've already done that. And then you'll be brought to this screen, add game. Now, so what you want to do is you'll want to give it a name. If you have a website, put the category, specify Unity. And each step has save and next. Then you have the description, a game made to help show up how to install Unity's Game Jolt API. Uh, this game has no form of violence. Uh, if you have a thumbnail, you can upload it here and there are there's a link to guidelines so you can make it the perfect ratio you can add a header to your web to your game page media such as pictures and gameplay footage will be here later to upload a game when it's time you can include a soundtrack for your game and if you want to implement unity i mean google analytics you can put in a google analytics link here and it'll connect game jolt to there you can monetize the game allow comments and allow ratings we will not be monetizing this game. So it requires a thumbnail or you can publish the game, but we can save the draft. Then you have this screen. And what we need is the API setting. So now that you've done that, what you'll want to do is you'll want to Google search Game Jolt API Unity. Then you get to this page, click on that, and you'll be here. And what you want to do is you want to click download and click that little pop-up thing. It will download. It is a Unity package. Now, if we go to our game, Click and drag it over to your project folder and you'll want to accept all of this stuff. Everything you want to import, every last piece of this. Once it's been imported, you'll have a plugins folder. Now what you want to do is you need this page, Game Jolt API setting. You need this game ID and we need that private key. So where you put that, right here, we're going to grab this. And then what you want to do is for debug mode, you can input uh, your your login credentials for the system. And speaking of that, with login credentials, if you want to get it, it's right here on the screen. It's under game token under your character's icon. And that is your login info. All right, once you've added, once it's fully in and you've linked the password and everything, you're gonna go into plugins, game jolt, prefabs, Take the Game Jolt API prefab and add it to the scene. Once it's been implemented, what you're going to want to do is, if you have a play button that appears, you're going to want it only to appear once the player has logged in. So the way we're going to do that is it's going to be like this. We're going to make a public boolean called is signed in. And once we've done that, void start, we're going to type in Game Jolt, which now shows up at UI dot manager dot instance dot show show sign in. What this is gonna do when the game starts, it's gonna show the sign in screen. Now what we're gonna do is in void update if if game jolt dot api dot manager dot instance dot current user is not equal to null that's going to do is that is going to set is signed in true now that that's been done in on gui we're going to add another criteria to this that's going to be if is signed in true it'll make the button appear all right so let's see if that'll work all right so if we hit play it plays that so now if we and if we click sign in it lets the button appear so we can proceed with the game. So now that that's working, we can move on to the second step, which is going to be implementing the trophy. Back over on the Game Jolt webpage under Game API, once we have, now that it is implemented and they're linked, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a platinum trophy called, you did it, you got a trophy. And this gives us a trophy ID. 
That is very important. So I'm gonna write that down 660.75. All right, so now that we have a trophy ID, go back into Unity, into the scripting, we're going to implement in the trophy, to the trophy button. Now that we have our trophy ID, we can add it in. So if we do game, jolt dot api dot trophies dot unlock parentheses now it wants the trophy id which we have 66075 um uh full success and then we we're gonna add in a debug log so we know if it worked or not equals arrow close bracket close parentheses let me call f s bug dot log else dot log that should work so we're gonna save that once we sign in click play click trophy the success unlocked you did it we're on to the final part which is going to be getting the score into game jolt so to do that we need to go back in here scores and it gave us we have the main score which we are going to be using you can add different scores, you can have a time, it's all up to you. For our score, it's 19156. Let's head back to Unity. And so wherever you have your score, at the end of your game, or after the game is finished, wherever the score is, whether it's referenced from another scene and another script, or wherever it is, you're going to add this stuff in. So for our for this game, I literally just have a random range for the score. So what you need to do is we're gonna set this up as player an integer score score value that equal. Score. Now what you need to do is you need to do since it's currently a form of numbers, it needs to be a string. So for that, we need to add in string score text equal score value dot to string. Now the big thing that we need, which is integer table i table ID, which for this one is equal to 191586. And lastly, there is an extra string that if you want to use extra data, which this is purely a programmer and developer side. And if you want to add anything, extra information, you can store it here. But now it's the very important thing. Now we're going to send the score. And so to send the score, we're going to write in gamejolt.api.scores.add. And then in parentheses, first up is the score, score value, score text, table ID, and extra data. And now we're going to do, once again, the, um, now we're going to be re-implementing that Boolean system in order to test if we have success or not. So this one is a lot simpler. So s equals arrow bracket bug dot log string dot format parentheses double quotation for add brackets with zero and comma success question mark successful colon and then in double quotations failed two closing parentheses and then a semicolon closing bracket close parentheses semicolon that sh should be working go back to the menu play sign in play trophy unlock the trophy click this we have a score and it should score add successful so we sh we pretty much have a fully working game now so now that we've done that um back in the score system what you can do is you can view the scores and as you can see from just now, when I hit play, my data was sent in. All right, so now that you've done that, what you need to do is, I cannot show it again, but under Game Jolt API settings, you need to remove your password and login from the debug mode. So I'm gonna do that off camera, then I'll be right back. As you can see, I've achieved the trophy. So that's pretty awesome that it works. So now we're down to the final steps, which is putting the game on the website. So what we do is go to build settings, make sure you have your right uh, screen ratio. We're going to have a non full screen 800 by 500 game. I'm gonna click build, angel API game, and name it the button. 
Game's gonna, the game is going to compile. And we have our game. And so we need the button underscore data and these other two things. We're going to go and manage game. All right, so we have picked an image for the button. We're going to upload the thumbnail and you can actually change what's visible. And it does a specific uh, perspective. So we're gonna hit save. Now we're going to upload the package. Public, anyone can access this. If you wanna make your game be key accessible only, you can do that here. So you can make keys, but this is not going to cover that. Make this game be free to play, pay what you want or paid, but you have to set up financial information. Now you're gonna click add package. So here is the package, but inside of the package is the release. Once you come to this page, you're gonna see the version number is really useful. It gives you advice that it should be a major, minor, and patch. So if we were going to tweak a little thing on this game and update it, we would change last zero to a one. We're gonna click choose file for downloadable build. I already have the window up and we're gonna choose the zip folder. It's going to upload the game. Once the game has been uploaded, still incomplete because you have to specify what this will run on. So we're gonna choose Windows 64 and Windows. And it is active. So now click publish release, it'll be ready. You're gonna get a confirmation page, click okay. And now we are going to click publish, hit okay. And the game is now active. It is now officially on the Game Jolt website. From earlier, the game has our score in there. We will not be able to show us the trophy thing again. But if we download the game, remember we only have one playthrough, and view the full scoreboard, we can see my scores. Game is downloaded. And if we go in here, we launch the game. It forces sign in. Sign in. Play button's appearable. Click play. Oh, we want a trophy. We got a trophy. And if we click me, 44760, close game. So, 44760. Now, if we refresh this page, 44760 is instantly added to the Game Jolt website for our score. And so, if you add a header, it goes up here. And if we go to my page, See, it's on here alongside the other games. But yes, that is the process to implement Game Jolt API to a Unity project. Would like to thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And to wrap up this video, any comments, questions for this? And thank you all for watching. My name is Paul Brown Squad TF2, the snipe with the skills. And I will see you later, my fellow mercs. Bye.